Hey guys, Luke Millette here. I know it's been uh, an incredibly long time since I uh, posted a new video, and uh, so I thought I'd uh, make a new one and share it with you guys. I've been getting ready to do a lot of camping this uh, spring and summer and a little bit in the fall, and uh, so I just thought I'd uh, kind of share my gear setup with you guys. And a lot of people don't know this, but I, I'm actually what you might call a prepper. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know it sounds kind of odd, but I think everyone should have some kind of setup just to have in case some kind of uh, unwanted scenario should arise. And so this is mine. Uh, I've spent like the last six or seven months buying all this stuff and putting it together. And I almost just went ahead and bought one of those like pre-made ones, but they're really overpriced and they just they come with garbage. So if you're, you know, if you want to go on camping trips or if you're a prepper and you just want to have something to uh, make sure that you can survive for a while, I would say build it yourself. Uh, I love it. Completely personalized and customized for me. And uh, we're going to talk about everything about this, including uh, the bag itself. Well, I guess what we're going to do is we're going to take off all of these things off the sides first and then talk about everything individually and then we're going to dive inside and see what we got. As I mentioned, this is more of a camping bag than a survival or bug out bag, but uh, they kind of serve the same purpose if you think about it. So this is my sleeping bag. It's just a regular Coleman sleeping bag that I got at Target, I think, for like 25 bucks. And uh, the bag it originally came in, it just, I don't know, it was too short and fat to uh, strap onto the side of my backpack. So what I did was, you know, I ditched the bag and I bought a regular compression bag from Walmart and it comes with its own compression straps, which is nice. And so that allowed me to uh, kind of stretch it out a bit and make it a little more strappable. And for any of you who are interested, this is pretty much what it originally came in. It's a comfort, smart, warm weather sleeping bag from uh, 40 to 60 and adult, right? Yeah, okay, so that's the bag. This is my sleeping system. It's uh, it's just a pretty standard tent, uh, Ozark Trail brand. It's a two-person, seven by seven dome tent. Uh, I think I got this also at Walmart for like 20 or 30 bucks. It really makes it easy to strap onto a backpack. And uh, if you have a big enough backpack, you could probably just stuff the whole thing right in it. And then of course we have the tarp really nothing fancy about this tarp at all. Uh, also got it at Walmart. It was like seven bucks. And I think it's, uh, I don't remember how big it is. I think it's like eight by nine, seven by nine, something like that. And that slides right into the bottom straps of my backpack. So basically on the outside of my backpack, I have one of the seas of survival completely covered, which is cover. <laughs> yuck, yuck, yuck. Okay, so this is the backpack itself with all of the tent and tarp and everything removed from it. This is a Miltech tactical assault pack with uh, molly or mole webbing. I don't know how to say that word, so you're gonna have to excuse me. But it's a 36 milliliter. It came it also comes with a 50 mil option, but I thought that when you're going to be camping around and backpacking and all that, I always think that, you know, smaller is better. Because if it's bigger, you're just going to be tempted to way overstuff it. And, and on the outside of it, I've got one of these uh, nondescript folding knives. It's pretty dirty. I have not taken great care of this knife, but uh, I'm going to get it cleaned up and hopefully get it in some kind of better shape. And then right here, I have an Ultrafire LED flashlight. 
Now what's really cool about this light is besides being like bright as hell, it has a it has a couple different settings on it. Like if you just tap the button, there we go. You can do strobe light mode, and if you just push it in again, it actually does SOS. S O S automatically. So if you need to be rescued, you can just set this thing down somewhere and uh, it'll do SOS signals for you while you go and uh, pray for your life somewhere else. The only thing I don't like about this light is that instead of like any regular battery, it has to come with like these uh, 18650 batteries, which are a pain in the ass to find. You gotta keep them charged, of course. So if you're in the middle of the woods and you can't charge batteries, you kind of SOL, pal. And then right here on the front of the pack, we have a scout pack. What's a scout pack, you ask? Well, it's basically just a stripped down, simplified version of the big pack. Once you have some kind of camp established and set up, this is what you would take with you when you venture out away from your camp. And uh, it's got this cool clip so you can clip it onto the backpack or your belt, but uh, we're going to talk about this later after the backpack. Actually, before we move on to the backpack, I wanted to mention a few things that I'll just be carrying on uh, on my person at all times. I got this, uh, this whetstone knife from, uh, I don't know, some online retailer. I mean, it looks pretty freaking sweet, I'm not gonna lie, but it was cheap, and you get what you pay for. So, I went ahead and I bought a couple of other knives. They have not arrived yet. Got them on Amazon, they should be shipping and arriving any day now, but until I get them, I'll be throwing images up of the knives I'm expecting to get. The sheath is pretty cheap. It's got plastic, and but it does come with a little sharpening stone, which is nice, but I don't know how to use the sharpening stone too well, so I don't want to damage the knife by using it incorrectly, so maybe someone out there can tell me how to use it. The thing that I like about this knife, though, is uh, it's not full tang, which is a problem, so I'm afraid that the, the blade might break at the handle someday, but it's got a hollowed out base, just like Rambo, yeah. Button compass, not sure how reliable it is, but any compass is better than no compass. And you got this pull-out tube in this tube. What did they give you? Oh, I went ahead and stuffed cotton balls in them for tinder or for first aid. Cotton balls, only a million uses in the woods. Now this came with the, the tube. I didn't put anything else in here. It came with the like five matches, some fishing line, fishing hook, which is kind of nice, you can do some fishing, and a striker pad for the matches. And it came with a band-aid in it, a very sorry excuse of a band-aid, so I, I took that out. And as I said, I don't entirely trust my life with this knife. If I'm out in the middle of the woods and this thing breaks on me, I'm kind of, uh, kind of in between a rock and a hard place, so... Another thing I'm gonna always have on me is the uh, the Bear Grylls uh, Fire Striker. This thing is amazing. People don't always like these built Bear Grylls products, but uh, they're from Gerber and they're actually very high quality, durable stuff. I mean, this thing will make a huge shower of sparks and it's, <laughs> it's kind of incredible. It also came with a uh, lanyard and a whistle on it, but it, it just got in the way, so I went ahead and cut it off. And then in the base, it has a waterproof seal. I still left a little bit of cord on it, just to pop it off. And in the bottom, I have more cotton balls for tinder. And then I also have a nice pair of uh, polyurethane coated gloves, or uh, what do they call them? Gorilla Grip gloves. You can get these at Home Depot for like five bucks. And it just makes handling things that might be sharp or wet or hot just a little bit easier to uh, handle so you don't hurt yourself. Uh, about the backpack itself, like I said, it's a, uh, it's by Miltech. I don't know, like, the model number 
anything like that. It's just, I got it on Amazon. It's just branded as Miltech Tactical Assault Pack with the uh, Mole webbing. And will someone please correct me if I'm saying that word completely wrong? It's a very spacious bag. It's got Mole webbing all down the side, all over the front. It has a uh, Two pockets in the front, small and medium, and then it has two larger compartments, which zip all the way down to the bottom, which uh, <laughs> I love that, because you can basically open it like a big sandwich, and you don't have to go digging for things at the bottom. And I really like that it has these, these uh, compression loops on the bottom and on both sides, which allowed me to strap the sleeping bag, the tent, and the tarp all on the outside. So now we're gonna actually get into the bag and we're gonna start with this smaller, no, the medium outer pocket. So in this pocket I keep about four deep woods off uh, towelettes unscented because uh, I didn't want to carry around one of those spray bottles because those uh, made out of you know plastic or metal they can get a little heavy and they can take up a lot of room so I went with these uh, these very thin, lightweight uh, towelette kind of things. And then, uh, this is really cool. I actually just got this today at a <laughs> at an antique store of all places. It's a old can of uh, shoe polish, I believe, but I will be using it as a uh, char cloth tin. Son of a... there we go. So yeah, it's a... Just a tin can, but uh, I need to poke a hole in the top of it. So what the idea is, you stuff this thing full of cotton, like uh, an old t-shirt or a bandana or something like that, and then you just kind of throw it in the fire and it makes a good amount of char cloth. I've never done that before, so uh, maybe you guys will see me do that in a future video, but char cloth tin. Big industrial sized bag of cotton balls. Like I said, these things have infinite uses, and also in here, I have some uh, some latex gloves for uh, for first first aid. But also, if you plan on going fishing or hunting or trapping animals, it's good. It's just a good idea to have latex gloves to uh, keep your scent off of the bait as much as possible. Got your buffalo wild wings moist towelettes for when you have too many chicken wings. One of those emergency space blankets uh, be a good thing to put on the inside of your sleeping bag if it's a cold night and you have a hard time retaining uh, your internal body temperature. This thing <laughs> could be quite a lifesaver. Toilet paper. I'm a man of luxury. I really don't feel like wiping my butt with uh, banana leaves when I have to take a crap in the woods. I don't think this bag is waterproof and I'm not going to test that. So, toilet paper, Ziploc bag, hand warmers, toe warmers, uh, I don't plan on camping in arctic conditions by any means, but it's just something good to have because uh, you just never know where you're gonna end up or what the weather's gonna be like, so it's just something good to have. Now we move up to the smaller top pocket, got lots of cool stuff in this one. Uh, keep a knife sharpener. This is a uh, Smith's one. It's not exactly a pocket sharpener, but it's got this really nice grip on it, so you you know you don't lose your handle on it. It's got the coarse and the fine, but then it also has a uh, fishing line cutter and this nice little uh, grooved edges for sharpening uh, fishing hooks, zip ties. You can use these for uh, construction or just things that you need to keep secured. Alright, we got a cotton bandana in a sweet digital camo. Um, I'm not even going to insult your intelligence by explaining the uses of a cotton bandana because it's only about like 5,000 uses for these things. So, Next up, I have a vial full of uh, wood shavings that I made myself, if the camera can focus on it. Hello? Yes. Um, I took a page out of Alfie Aesthetics book, 
I made this with a pencil sharpener. Just, uh, you know, make a, t get a stick, get a pencil sharpener, and just make a bunch of uh, tinder shavings in case you, for whatever reason, can't find any. Ball bearings for a slingshot. Uh, now, I'm just gonna tell you guys right away, one thing you're gonna see missing from my bag is a gun. And I do not plan on having a gun. So, for all the people who are planning on saying, oh, you're missing a gun, where, where are all your guns and bullets? Just save your breath, because I'm not... I'm not about to go through the trouble of obtaining permits and licenses and... Uh, training for pistols and all that. I'm just not a gun guy. So I go with the slingshot. Different strokes for different folks. Bear Grylls Pocket Survival Guide. This comes with everything that he makes. So I have like t 10 of these in my kit. And you know, it's, it's waterproof. It's a pretty good guide. It tells you how to make fire and shelter and how to call down rescue and all that. But uh, I don't see myself getting in that much trouble just going camping, but it's good to have. Tent pegs. Uh, the tent that I have comes with pegs, but these could, uh, another page from uh, Alfie Aesthetics, you can use these tent pegs to keep a, like a, you know, a surface for cooking on. You can use the tent pegs as stands and then lay a kind of a wire mesh over top of it so you can uh, cook your food. Got a roll of duct tape. Um, I've seen a lot of these bags where people will just throw in an entire roll of duct tape and that just takes up way too much weight and space in your bag. So this is just like a six or seven foot strip of it I wrapped around a uh, piece of cardboard and <sighs> duct tape, man. Infinite uses. You can use it for first aid if you don't have any of those uh, gauze bandages. You can use it for repairing your tent, or you can use it for uh, taping over your girlfriend's mouth if she won't shut up. Aluminum foil of varying sizes. Um, you can use this for cooking. You know, if you catch a trout or a fish or whatever, you can just wrap it up in one of these things and just throw that sucker right in the fire. And uh, you can also bundle these up and use it to uh, clean your cooking pots and stuff. Now, as I mentioned about the flashlight that I have, it's a pain in the butt trying to find these batteries. So I went ahead and just bought them in a bulk. They're all fully charged, and so I'm hoping that they'll last me a while until they all eventually die and then I'm without light. And a very a teeny tiny sorry little bundle of paracord. Okay, so that is it for this, uh, this top small flap, and now we're gonna start cracking into the bigger pouches. Okay, so in this first pouch of the larger size, this is where I keep all of my food supply. Gotta have food. It's an aluminum flask or steel flask, stainless steel. Um, it's empty right now, but uh, I plan on putting some, uh, some very fine liquor in here at some point. Because you're in the woods, you've just had a long, hard day of uh, making fires and shelter building and all that, and you're gonna want something to take the edge off at the end of the day. Got a bag of beef jerky, original, yum. And I am a huge fan of Mountain House, so I keep a ton of these things around. With Mountain House, you can't go wrong. So here we have uh, scrambled eggs with bacon. This is, this is a very new flavor that I was super excited about. Biscuits and gravy. And then, this is a new thing that uh, I've never seen on a Mountain House bag before. On the bottom, they started putting these like survival tips. Stop. Stop, think, observe, and plan. Every little thing is gonna be all right. Ain't that the truth. Chili Mac with beef. I have not had this one yet, but I hear good things. And the classic beef stroganoff with noodles. This is the first Mountain House bag that I've ever had, and <laughs> it was one of the greatest things I've ever had in my life. So I have a ton of these in my food storage. We have a jar of crunchy peanut butter. Uh, peanut butter in general is just a good survival food because it's loaded with calories. So if you're like really hard up for food, Peanut butter can go a long way, so I always keep a jar of this in my bag. 
I think it's pretty much required that everyone has a bag of uh, ramen instant noodles in their uh, camp out bag. And this is my coffee kit. Uh, I got these little plastic bottles at uh, Walmart. Came in like a huge pack so you can uh, put a bunch of different things in a bunch of different containers. And here I have my freeze dried instant coffee creamer for the coffee and then sugar for the coffee. And then finally, I got, uh, you know, one of these camping things. It comes with a spoon, a knife, and a fork, and a bottle opener for when you've had a really hard day and you just need that bottle of wine. Okay, so I just had to take a quick break, uh, take the dog out for a walk. <sighs> and of course, the bag I used to pick up her feces had a nice big hole in it, so you can imagine the debacle that that situation quickly became. I think I'm suffering from post-traumatic poop disorder, but the show must go on. So back to the bag. So as I mentioned earlier, this the whole back section of this bag does open up into a nice uh, clam-shaped design, so we're just gonna kind of fillet the whole thing uh, right open here. Boom. That's what's inside. And uh, right here... We have some uh, extra underwear, uh, probably shouldn't have showed you that. Extra socks, keep everything in Ziploc bags, because again, I do not think this bag is waterproof, and I'm not gonna test that. Assorted types of fungi that I collected the other day, because uh, I think it could be, you know, good source of tinder. Being OCD, everything in my bag is pretty redundant. I have several types of uh, fire making, water purifying, different types of tinder. I have a lot of doubles and different ways to do things because, you know, variety is the spice of life. So, fungus. Got my slingshot. Oh, yeah. Crank powered radio. This is a pretty neat little gadget. Whoa. Just <laughs> forget you heard that. And it's also a cool flashlight. <laughs> so, for those of you who are worried about my uh, my ultra fire and the 18650 batteries dying, this would be my uh, my alternative light source, so I'm not left completely in the dark. Now, these are my favorite things. I don't know if you guys know or not, but they have these things out now called gear pods. And holy crap, are these things perfect for people with uh, OCD like me. They're uh, crush-proof, waterproof, color-coded containers meant to hold a variety of different things. I have three of them here. The largest one is blue for water. My Coleman water purifying tablets. One purifies the water and one makes the water not taste like crap. Got my Sawyer uh, water filter with a straw and the bag to hold it in. Now, this thing is really cool. I hear it can filter up to like 10,000 gallons of water or something nuts like that. So you can use the bag to fill it up with water and you attach this onto it and then you use the straw to drink out of. Or you can say, forget the bag, just uh, attach the straw right to it and you can use this to drink right out of a lake or a uh, pond or any other water source, but I, I wouldn't recommend it. In the medium-sized gear pod, we have our fire-making stuff. Crack it open. The first thing you see on top is a big bundle of dryer lint. Uh, I think dryer lint is an excellent source of tinder, and it's free. You just dig it out of your filthy dryer. For those of you who don't know, you have to clean that stuff out every once in a while. More tinder. We've got cotton balls, cotton balls cotton balls for days. This is my pencil sharpener that I use to, uh, you know, use sticks, twist them in there, and then you got a nice little collection of tinder. And again, uh, I gotta credit Alfie for that one. Thanks, Alfie. So I also keep a couple of Bic lighters in there. Um, if you're gonna buy lighters, I really recommend Bic, especially over those, uh, those cheap crack lighters that, uh, just tend to break, the flint pops out, and then then you're really screwed. Stormproof, windproof, waterproof matches. And in the lid of that, guess what we have? That's right, more cotton balls. And then it's got a nice uh, striker on the side. 
And I really like how it's bright orange, so if uh, you, you know, you misplace it or you lose it on the trail somewhere, you could, uh, you can easily see it. Wet fire tinder. I've never had these, I've never used them before, but, uh, apparently they work really well. It's just like a little white cube, and what you can do is you can take your knife, shave a little bit of it off to make a pile, or if it's like, if the weather is really, like, hitting the fan, you can just light the whole cube and, uh, it should burn for quite a while. And then finally, we have our first aid pod. Um, more surgical gloves, just for treating wounds or for uh, baiting your fishing line or baiting your trap so the animals can't smell you. I got a little, little capsule here. In here I keep aspirin, anti-diarrhea, and anti-heartburn. Uh, nice little vial of hydrogen peroxide. I had a gigantic bottle and uh, it just took up too much you know, weight and size so I was pretty happy to find a smaller container I could put it in. Tweezers. Um, I keep lozenges or you know cough drops in my kit because uh, if you're having a hard time finding or purifying water this could be a good thing to help uh, prolong the onset of dehydration. Just popping this in your mouth will keep your saliva glands going just a little bit more than normal. I learned that from watching the cube. There's the Bear Grylls emergency whistle. This, yeah, this came on the fire striker and that was just, that was bugging the crap out of me, so I cut that thing right off. And then in here we got a bunch of band-aids of varying sizes, some moleskin, some uh, insect itch cream, burn cream, all kinds of creams, stuff like that. That's basically what's in my first aid kit. So yeah, now we're getting towards the bottom of the bag here. Stainless steel water bottle. This thing is awesome for uh, boiling water and purifying it and using it for cooking. And it just comes off like that. Now, I had the heck of a time trying to make a bale wire for this thing. So, I was watching some videos on YouTube on how this could be done a little easier and I found the most helpful video by like some, you know, 11, 12 year old kid, you know, taught me this. He said to just get like a, uh, you know, wire hanger and twist it around a rod and then to bend the ends. So what you can do, just put the ends in there, and boom, you got like a, a handle. But then I tested it with the, uh, I filled this completely full of water and this thing just popped right out. So what I did was I painstakingly drilled some holes in the side so that these, the hooks on this hanger actually just go right through those holes. There. Now that provides a much more secure handle. It's completely full of water, that handle isn't going anywhere. And then of course the loop is for using a stick to carry it off the fire. In addition to a stainless steel water bottle, I think it's good to just have a regular plastic one for cold regular drinking water. It's got a spout. And then uh, it also measures how many milliliters of water you have. Gotta have the paracord, right? So I've got this gigantic braided mess of a 510 paracord. Again, this is something that I guess everyone should have. It only has about 1,500,000 uses. But I'm going to be completely honest with you. With the kind of camping I'm going to be doing, I, I don't see myself using this at all, really. But better have it, not need it, than need it and not have it. I got some uh, trash bags here. Mostly for, uh, you know, collecting, you know, trash. <laughs> I'm going to be making a lot of trash, I think, and I don't like litter bugs, so I like to keep all of my trash nice and uh, bagged up so I can throw it away later. Oh yeah, my Coleman hatchet. Just sharpened this thing the other day, so it's got a pretty fine edge on it. And then it also has a notch for removing uh, tent pegs right out of the ground. And you could also use the back of it as a hammer. So. Multiple uses for one item is always a it's always a good thing to keep in mind. Binoculars for uh, spying on the other campers in the area. Got to know what everyone else is doing, right? And then we have our cup, stainless steel cup. In there, it's a measuring cup. And then in there, 
multi-spice. I don't know about you guys, but I, I enjoy food. I want it to taste good. Now, why measuring cup? That seems a bit silly, right? Well, if you remember me mentioning earlier, I'm, I'm a bit of a mountain house whore. I need my mountain house. And every single one of these bags has a completely different amount of water that they require to reconstitute properly. If you overfill it, it's gonna taste like mush. If you don't fill it enough, then it's gonna be a little al dente. So something small and light just to ensure that I'm putting in the right amount of water is gonna make all the difference in the world to me at least. And then the cup has these cool fold out handles for making uh, coffee or boiling more water and everything just kind of slips in right together like that. So now I'm sure all you guys are wondering what the hell is a super MRE? This is a super MRE. I kind of invented this. It's nothing fancy. All it is is it's two MREs combined into one bag because these like these mylar bags they can actually hold a lot more than uh, what the military puts in them. So what I do is I crack it open and I take another MRE and I just stuff the living crap out of it. See like this menu is pork sausage with gravy and then the other one that I added to it is chili macaroni. And with all of the the breads and the sides and the drinks and the desserts, that should be enough to last me 24 hours. I'm a pretty I'm a pretty small guy, but I don't know. I might need a little more than that, which is why I carry the mountain house bags too. And then finally, wire mesh. Remember those tent pegs I was talking to you about? Well, you hammer four of those into the ground and you can place this right on top of it and that'll act as a makeshift uh, grill. Okay, now there are a couple of things I neglected to put in my kit, um, you know, for law and safety reasons, but if it were a complete apocalyptic shit has hit the fan and there's chaos everywhere kind of situation, then I would also put these into my kit. Just a couple of full-sized rat traps for uh, trapping. And what I did was I screwed some uh, eye hooks in the back of it so you can use paracord to uh, attach it to a pole or a tree to prevent whatever you have trapped from uh, running for its life. <laughs> But, going camping, these would probably not be the best idea, because people have dogs and kids running around and, oh look, a, 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 ow, no, my finger! Okay, so, remember that scout pack that clips onto the back of the backpack I told you guys we'd be talking about separately? <sighs> well, now we're going to talk about it. Now, for the scout packs, a lot of people use Maxpedition branded things or things specifically designed for this, and that's, you know, that's totally cool. I would too, if I didn't already have this. Well, what is this? Uh, it's a good question, I don't know. I found it somewhere, uh, someone was throwing it away, and I said, well, I'm sure I could use that for something. I think it's for photographers. Yeah, I think this is something that there's, you know, that they keep spare batteries and film and flash bulbs in. And I'm like, well, it's a scout pack now. So what's the point of a scout pack? Well, scout pack is designed to be a, an incredibly stripped down, simplified version of the survival pack. Once you have a base camp established, this is the pack you would take with you on uh, a hike for foraging or just general exploring, so it's got to be small, it's got to be lightweight and portable, but still have all the necessary essentials to uh, get you out of a jam, so let's just dig into it and see what comes out. Okay, so in this front pouch, this is where I keep all my uh, first aid stuff, just so, you know, if I split my finger open I want to know where I can easily get at the first aid stuff. So first, uh, another one of these freaking things. Bear Grylls Essentials of Survival. It's just a good thing to have. So I have 
quick and clean antiseptic wipes just in case you get a cut on the trail. Some uh, cinnamon chiclet gum from an MRE. Insect sting relief. A whole crap ton of band-aids. Whoops. All shapes and sizes, butterfly enclosures, waterproof, and some big pads in case you get like a super cut. Oh man, I wouldn't even wish that on my worst enemy. And a roll of duct tape. A thousand and one uses. So that's what's in the front of it. And uh, if we open the main compartment here, that's not where the zipper is here. It's... Right away on top, we have another bandana. Just in case you need to purify water or make a splint or keep the sweat out of your eyes, whatever. Bandana, always have one with you. And then in here, I keep a smaller knife. This is my uh, badass Bear grill scouting knife. This thing is sharp, so be careful. If you get any Gerber or Bear Grylls knife, it's gonna be razor sharp, like right out of the package. So you gotta be really careful. It really bugs me how Bear has to put his, his initials on everything, but he makes a quality product, so I'm not gonna give him any guff, you know? The guy works hard, he makes quality product, so I don't, I don't blame him for wanting to put his name on it. Next thing, I have about two or three sandwich bags here. These can be great for uh, collecting water, and uh, it's just good to have some kind of portable container with you. And next up, we have a bundle of beef jerky. Most people don't put any kind of food in their scout packs, and I think that's nuts. What if you get so far from your camp that you're lost and you're hungry and, oh, my stomach hurts, I need to eat. And then alongside that, we also have a package of MRE peanut butter. As I mentioned before, I love MREs, and I love peanut butter. We also have some MRE toilet paper from uh, Lighthouse. Never had to use this before, and uh, I don't... I hope I never have to, but... It's just good to have some uh, little, you know, toilet paper or whatever. Got another cube of wet fire. We have this lobster tail shaped bundle of paracord that came with the Bear Grylls knife with a pretty big emergency whistle on the end of it. So this is a good combo. Two and one. Good job, Bear. Water purifying tablets. Big sheet of aluminum foil. Just in case the bags have a hole in it or something, you can use this to uh, collect water or wrap up some food in it and cook it or or whatever. I don't know. Use your imagination. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. A second emergency blanket, just in case you need to make like a second shelter home away from home. You could use the paracord, tie two trees together, and use this to make a makeshift tent, or just wrap it around you if you're freezing. Cotton balls. Always have cotton balls. It's tender and it's first aid. The only thing you can't do is eat it. Someone should design cotton balls that you can eat. A book of MRE matches, and a Bic lighter. That's everything in the pack. I would have a fire striker, but those two knives that I ordered, that I keep telling you guys about, that have not arrived yet, both of those knives each come with their own fire striker, and one of those knives will be on me at all times, so that kind of covers the fire striker aspect of it. Okay, so that's pretty much my scouting kit. Uh, pretty comprehensive, covers a little bit of all the bases, you know, uh, cutting, cordage, cover, combustion, container. It's got a little bit of everything. For hardcore survivalists, this could probably be all you need to have an entire camping adventure. Maybe I could add something or take some things away from just the scouting kit. Let me know. And the cool thing about this scouting kit, again, is it has the snap right on the back of it. So you can attach it right to your backpack or to your belt loop. And then uh, you're on your way. And yeah, so this is all of the stuff. Everything I talked about is now laid out uh, right here in front of you, and it all fits perfectly in or on the backpack. 
I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I hope uh, maybe someone out there maybe learned a trick or two that they could add to their bag. And if you have any comments or suggestions about things that you think I might have left out of my bag besides a gun, please, you know, let me know. Leave a comment. And uh, Now, I know that uh, weight is a huge issue, especially if you have to do lots of hiking and trekking and basic surviving. And I weigh... I think I weigh 150 pounds, and I think the golden rule is that it should not be more than a third of your body weight, and, you know, I'm no scale, but if I had to guess, I would mm, ballpark that this whole kit weighs about 50 pounds? So I'm pretty much right on the limit here, so I don't really have a whole lot of room to add anything. But, you know, I'm always open to suggestions and making things better, you know, see what works, see what doesn't work, but, uh, yeah, this is the kit, and, uh, thanks for watching. Camp on. And this is definitely gonna be the thumbnail of the video.